I made a box. And this is actually the first box that I've ever made. It is made out of walnut. It has brass inlay, brass splines, and an insert to hold all of my favorite teas. Stay tuned to see how I made it. Like a lot of my projects, this one started off at the planer. I had some five quarter walnut that I planed down and cleaned up. And then I took it to the table saw to clean up the edges. I'm going to give you guys a warning here. There is a ton of resawing in this project. Let's see if we could keep track. So I resawed this board one time and then I resawed it two more times after that to create two panels for the box top and bottom. I used my router kind of like as a jointer to clean up the edges before glue up. I made a whole other video on how to do that. I'll put a link to that somewhere. And then I glued up two panels. This is one, the other one is off camera somewhere. This was a fairly straightforward glue up. I ended up actually just putting like a call in the middle to keep it straight and it was great. And while that was drying, I got to working on the maple insert for all the tea bags. I cleaned it up on the planer and then I took it to the table saw again to clean it up. And I warned you guys there was going to be a lot of resawing in this video. So here I am again resawing that maple into some thinner stock. There was just a tiny little sliver left in between the two and I was able to pry them open with a chisel and then also clean up all those little slivers with a chisel and send it through my planer to get it to the correct thickness that I needed for the partitions. Then I ripped them to width on the table saw and cut them to length on the miter saw. I'm gonna put a link down below to my website where there's gonna be all the measurements for this project. Now, I needed to figure out a way to create evenly spaced half laps for the insert that was going to hold all the tea bags. And I know I could have made some sort of jig at the table saw using my crosscut sled where I could create the half laps, but I just recently got my router table and I wanted to play with a new toy. So I decided to make this jig for my router table. So this jig consists of two fairly thin pieces of plywood and just those little triangle corner braces. And I used my Craig jig to create kind of like an L shape, making sure that the screws were not going to be where the router bit on the router table was gonna go. And I just screwed them into place and then the corner braces were popping up a little bit. So I just took them over to the bandsaw and cleaned them up so they weren't sharp anymore. I glued them into place and then attached them with a brad nailer, kind of like to act as a clamp just to hold them down in the meantime and I could keep continuing working on. Then I measured for a runner to fit in the slot of the router table and I ripped down a piece of wood that would fit right into the slot and it fit perfectly snug, it slid easily and it didn't move. So I pre-drilled and then I screwed it down into place making sure that it was square. So I actually should have waited to put the runner on because I needed to make a slot where a key was going to go to create the half laps. And in order to do that while the runner was in, I had to lift it up off the router table with this extra piece. And it was a little bit scary, but it was fine to do it like that. So for the key, I just used a cutoff from the maple slats that I was using and I glued it into place. The maple has to be the same thickness as the router bit. And that's really the only thing that's with this jig and I set the router bit higher than the key so that I would be able to pass it over. And here we go, let's see how this works. After the first pass, I realized there needed to be some sort of stop. So I clamped a stop in the track and now for take two, let's see how it goes. I put a sacrificial piece of pine in front of the maple just to protect a little, a little bit and now with the second pass, the stop was working great, but I realized that there was some tear out on the back. So I decided to sandwich the maple between two sacrificial pieces of pine. So a maple and pine sandwich. And let's see how that goes. So it was going okay, but it seemed like it was really tedious and I was still had to raise up the bit to get to the full height that I needed. So I decided to clear out most of the material at the bandsaw first. That way I can stack up the pieces of the maple and I could do three or four pieces at a time because the bit was only cleaning up the cut. It wasn't taking out so much wood and that worked perfectly. That was the perfect combination and I was really happy with how this jig worked on the router table. And the glue up went pretty seamlessly since all the spaces were evenly spaced out because of the jig I had made, it was just really easy to tap them right into place. And I made sure to sand all the sides of these pieces before assembling them. And I just cleaned up the glue squeeze out with a straw in the corners. And after it was all dry, I went with a hand plane and a sander to flush up the tops of the partitions. 
I then used my CNC to rat out the grooves for the brass inlay for the top, but the router bit leaves rounded corners, so I had to come back with a chisel and chisel out those tiny little corners to create a perfectly square groove inside these boards. I cut the brass strips using rusty old shears that I found in my garage from the previous house owners, and um, it seemed to work okay. And I just cut them to rough length to fit into the board, and then I put a jig on my benchtop sander in order to create a perfect 90 degree angle for these pieces to fit together. And now here is where everything started to go a little bit downhill. The biggest problem that I had is that I did not put a deep enough groove in this board to accommodate for the thickness of the epoxy and the brass. So I should have gone deeper on the CNC so that there was room left over. And I think maybe I should have used CA glue. I think that maybe would have been a better option. But um, the brass was a little bit higher than the wood, so I had to do a ton of sanding on the brass, and that turned into a whole host of other problems. But whatever, I just kept on going on, and it ended up being okay in the end. Now, I won't bore you with all the sanding that I had to do in this project, because there was a ton of it, but I don't think I should have used this belt sander. I think it heated up the epoxy too much, and some of the brass came loose. But whatever, I dealt with it, and it ended up being fine in the end. After the panels were finished, I got to working on the sides of the box. I have this five quarter piece of walnut that I milled up and cut to size and then ripped in half. And you guessed it, I then resawed those two pieces again. So what's the resaw count on this build? Is anybody keeping track? So I finished the cut on the bandsaw because they were just a little bit thick in the middle. And I cleaned it up using this little block plane. It's really fun to use this block plane sometimes. Then back at the table saw, I set the blade to be a quarter inch high and a quarter inch away from the fence so that I could create the grooves to house the top and bottom panels of the box. And how cool is this push stick that my friend Alma from Pink Soul Studios made for me? I decided to try using my miter saw to cut the miters for the box and it was dead on. I cut a miter on one end of each of the boards and then used the partition insert that I had made earlier to reference for the size on how long I should make each of the pieces. And now they were ready for glue up. So I put tape on the inside corners to help with any of the glue squeeze out. And then I taped up all the miters next to each other, flipped it over, and then I put glue in all the corners. And I thought tape was going to be enough to hold it together, but I was wrong. So I just used this like band clamp kind of thing and then a bunch of other clamps to hold it all together. And it was freezing outside, so I had to bring it all inside to set up and dry. And after the glue dried, I got to working on the splines. I used this jig from Colin Connect's video. I'll put the link down below. I just needed to make a little notch on the underside so I could raise the router high enough that the bit was gonna cut through the wood at the right depth. And it was great. It worked really well. It was really easy and simple to do. I'm actually surprised at how easy it actually was. Then I just needed to adjust the fence one time to create the slot for the middle spline. Maybe if I would have used um, half inch plywood instead of three quarter, then I wouldn't have to make the notch on the underside. I don't know, whatever. And now for the brass splines. This was so much easier than I ever thought it could possibly be. I tried cutting them on the miter saw first and it was super scary. Don't do that. Um, the band saw worked great. I happened to have had the perfect amount of brass for the amount of splines that I needed, which was really great. And then I just epoxied them into place because the router bit was the exact same size as the brass, they just fit perfectly and it was so easy to do. And it just looks super cool. So after the epoxy dried, I took it to the bandsaw and cut away at all the excess brass that was sticking out. And then I took it to the sander and sanded away until it was all flush. I sanded a lot. After the brass was flush, I took it to the table saw to separate the top from the bottom. I was really scared and nervous to do this cut, but in the end, it was not so bad at all, and it was really cool. I just needed to clean up the table saw marks with a piece of melamine and sticky back sandpaper clamped to my kitchen table. Now that the top and the bottom were completely flat, I had to work on the hinges, which were a little bit harder than I thought they would be. I marked off the spots where they needed to go and used my router to clear out most of the waste and then chisel up to the line. Once the bottom was fit, I put it into place and marked off where they should go on the top using a very sophisticated razor blade. I repeated the same process as I did to the bottom to the top. I marked off with a razor blade and then used my router to route out most of the waste and then chiseled up to the line. Now, because I was putting these hinges in where they're gonna be flush to the back and they're not gonna be protruding out, I needed to route out a space for the hinge so it had room to move. 
Now, I'm not an expert at this at all. I watched a video literally right before this, and I'll put a link to that video on how to do that. But you just need to chisel away so the, um, the hinge has some space to move and open freely. And once I got it in and it worked, it was really satisfying. I used a self-centering drill bit, also known as a Vix bit, to pre-drill the holes for the screws. And brass screws are known to break, so what you want to do is take a steel screw and put those into the holes first to create the threads and then use a wax to put in the brass screws and then your brass screws will not break. I wasn't planning on putting a chamfer in between the top and bottom of the box, but it was at this point that I realized I needed to to create a relief so the box would open freely. So I used a block plane to make a chamfer and then I did the same thing to the top of the box that I did the bottom, the Vix bit, steel screw, brass screws. And I think there's probably an easier way to do this instead of holding up the bottom heavy part of the box, I probably could have held up the top of the box, but whatever, it worked and it was really, really satisfying. I decided to finish it with Danish oil because it's a super easy finish. You really just have to wipe it down and then wait 15 minutes and then clean it all up. Look at that green. I'm just loving how the brass looks with the walnut. After I put on the Danish oil and let it cure, I put on a layer of wax just to protect it a little bit more. And I also put um, Danish oil on the insert. And it's complete. The last step that I need to do is put the insert in. I decided not to glue it in just to keep my options open if I ever want to use this box for something other than tea. So there you have it. This was awesome. I was so happy with how this came out. Um, the brass inlay is just killer. And um, that was the biggest mistakes that I had on this build was doing the inlay. I should have gone deeper on the CNC. And that's where all my problems stem from was that I did not put the grooves deep enough to put the brass in. It's easier to sand wood than it is to sand brass, obviously. So that was my biggest mistake. Other than that, the brass splines was so surprisingly easy to do, and it just is such a crazy cool detail. I'm just really loving how that looks. And um, it's kind of on the big side. So if I were to make more of these, I think that I would shrink it a little bit. Um, I would remove a row um, at the length and the width, and then I think that it would be a good size. The hinges were also harder to do than I thought because I wanted to keep them flush at the back. I didn't want them protruding out, so I had to chisel away to create the space for it. But um, it still looks cool, it still looks good, and now I have a lot of tea to drink. So thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. I almost forgot to show you guys the tea in the tea box. So there it is with some of the compartments filled up with my tea. I actually filled up the whole thing and I'm loving how organized this is. Welcome boys and girls. Welcome to tomorrow's show. Don't forget to subscribe. So guys, I know you love this video because I do. <sighs> it's cool, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who still has cookie from the cookie jar? You? Nope. Or they couldn't be. Oh, couldn't be. Sorry. I had the kidding. It was me. You stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Yeah. So why are you blaming everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a funny one. <laughs> Who stole the banana from the banana jar? <laughs> you?